speaker sirens a noise from emergency vehicles may also be heard um, there may also be smoke that you might see um, according to a media release the exercise involves various training scenarios and is intended to prepare airmen to respond to emergency situations no there you go uh, 946 let's uh, keep it going here in the zoom room with cyrus lura guam animals uh, in need morning cyrus thanks for joining us oh, unmute, unmute. unmute morning thank you for having me uh just a few things i wanted to catch up first of all thank you for the pictures and we had talked about this earlier uh jason who runs uh our uh digital uh well he runs the digital stuff uh, basically <laughs> said that we'd probably get flagged for a lot of those uh uh, pictures because of the graphic content uh that being said that's one thing the other thing that i brought up with him was that it was alarming how many pictures you have of you know instances of animal cruelty because i feel like it's just it keeps happening right so it's true. it's true then th those are actually the toned down photos that i could i wow. could pull up on yeah, on yeah Cyrus, we're, gonna, we're, we're showing the safe ones like the more gra graphic ones we're not uh we're not showing but we're popping them up while you talk so yeah okay <laughs> So, and, and these these are the photos I, I'm unable to see them on my side. But as as the photos come up, these are the ones that have been in the press in just the last two years. Right. We see many other cases that don't you know don't uh, warrant news releases because they are you know there are no leads. There's no or, or there's or, or there are issues where the animal you know was simply wild and injured and such. But we're seeing lots of animal cruelty cases. We are very thankful that people are reporting them. But of course, it is disturbing that it's just this cycle of one news released after another with one shocking case after another. Right, and the most recent one was, uh, I believe, happened in a in a Hagatnya where um, a man was uh, caught by bystanders beating a dog with a log. Yeah, it was right across the street uh, from the U.S. District Court on the beach side, and a person who's known to reside in an, in a homeless encampment near there was seen with a very large uh, stick, basically a log, um, holding it above his head and smashed it down on a, on a medium-sized dog. Uh, the, the witnesses started screaming, telling him to stop. He did stop, but he's just, he was very aggressive, saying that it's his own dog, he can do whatever he wants to it, picked it up by its hind legs, kind of swung it a bit, and then just walked back into, uh, into like a, in you know, a, a hidden area. And so they didn't feel comfortable chasing him, but they did immediately call the GPD. Uh, by the time that officer showed up, though, he had already left. And so uh, the body was recovered. Some other people in the encampment had placed the body in, in an abandoned car. Um, but I do have some good news to report. The dog was taken to a vet clinic. It, it was very touch and go. They, they thought most likely would die, but they released him yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, the dog, uh, who's named Tyson, the residents in the area said he has a very fighting spirit. So they, they called him Tyson. And he was released to a uh, foster family but uh, it, it's still very touch and go. It, it's unclear whether he will full, fully recover. He walks very hesitantly and slowly. And so it, it could be side effects from very strong painkillers or it could be neurological damage, wow. in which case there might still be a need to, yeah, we're, he's not in the clear just yet. Right. Uh, but uh, but uh, there has been an outpouring of support from the community. There was a GoFundMe started by the residents in the area, and it had a huge, huge outpouring of I support. I saw. Uh, go ahead. No, I saw that it had a huge uh, outpouring of support. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, I think this this is just one of those things. Like it's is one case after another that is really disturbing to people. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, honestly I have a hard time believing it because we hadn't had one. Um, I, I think since that uh, guy shot at the dog over here in Harmon, and before that there was a dog drowning in Talafovo. So when each one of these cases come out, I'm just like, what? Another one? It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I know yeah. that you guys had met with the mayors, I believe, yesterday, and your uh, you were name dropped on the show this morning. And this is about the stray dog uh, issue. Um, tell us a, a little bit your side of how that meeting went down yesterday. We think it was, it was positive. Uh, it, there's a, there's a lot of energy uh, with the new um, you know, this new group that is uh, that is uh, spearheading this, uh, the stray dog um, committee uh, within the mayor's council, and uh, we had a very large turnout with the first meeting. And not only was it a big turnout with a lot of energy, and um, you know 
many times you see you see you see with the, these sort of meetings where plans are made they, they're ready to go they you know they, they wanted to meet the next day at gain to discuss things that we could do and so we met with the mayors again uh the next morning and we gave a tour of the facilities we discussed some kennels that needed repairs because we have a significant number of kennels up there that that really do need repairs right now they're kind of you know dogs can actually get loose from some of them so we have to figure out which strong dogs we put where and so the mayor's council has been really phenomenal in terms of like stepping up trying to help out bringing their guys up to help uh, uh, with some welding and such at the facility so we're hoping that we can Im uh, increase the capacity at the uh, at the shelter by improving these kennels um and then we're, we're we're slowly kind of putting together this broader plan to target one village after another to address the stray animal problems I want to make it clear that this is that from gain standpoint, this is not going to be a roundup and kill type program. That is not something that is effective. Um, when you start killing animals and not doing anything else, you actually increase the population. People don't realize that you create this vacuum effect that once the study after study has proven that if you simply kill the animals, the, uh, the, the old dogs that were consuming the resources are removed and suddenly you have a lot of puppies, uh, more than one, in that same vacuum uh, in, uh, growing up. And so you increase the population if you simply blindly kill. And so this is going to be a combination of identifying the feral aggressive dogs and removing those for euthanasia. But then the other other animals, the owned animals that are strays, the, or, or that are let to roam, uh, the strays that are friendly and the neighborhood kind of feeds, those are the ones you want to spay and neuter. Spaying and neutering is the only solution long-term for population control. And so we will be working on the mayors to promote that and also microchipping and rabies shots. And so there's a host of things that we wanna do. We're in the very early stages, but so far it's very promising. Now, when we had uh, agriculture director uh, Chelsea on earlier, she did say that euthanization would, would be a part of this uh, effort to uh, control the stray dog uh, issue. <laughs> Well, right now, there, I mean, for the feral animals, yes. If an animal is aggressive and it's ch chasing kids and such, that's obviously a situation that we would want to euthanize. Yeah. Uh, but that, but that's that's the current law as well, and those are the cases that we already address. But this is not going to be something where it's like 50, 60 percent of animals are going to be put down or anything like that. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to catch that many animals that would be, that would warrant euthanization. And uh, th there are many legal loopholes, or legal issues as well. So you can't right now do euthanasias out of and so uh, just jump into euthanizing in the family, impractical, but it's illegal. Uh, also, uh, she shared that you're getting some upgrades up there at the GIGO facility uh, with the mayors. You would care to share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So kennels right now that are very sort of paired. The, the facility at Gain is almost 50 years old. And so uh, actually it is over 50 years old. But some of the kennels are a little bit younger, but but nothing is 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 really uh, everything's pretty old. And so right now we, we need this done in order to to be able to increase the capacity of the kennels. And so the the mayors were taking a tour, seeing where that they can kind of help us strengthen up the fencing and strengthen up the kennels. And uh, they, they've been phenomenal, extremely responsive. They are uh, coming back up Thursday. And uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to move pretty quickly on this. Right on, Cyrus. Uh, we got to let you go. We got to head down to enter on to the vaccination clinic. But uh, in closing, uh, what would you like to tell the audience this morning? Just thank you. Uh, the outpouring of support has been great for Tyson. And if you do see animal cruelty um, in any form, please report it. Report it to the authorities. Report it again and again if you need to. And reach out to GAIN because we are happy to be an advocate to push for for whatever issues that you see out in the field so that we can get it addressed. So just thank you to everyone who, who, who stands up against this and then we hope to continue fighting the good fight. Uh, just a real quick question from a listener. Uh, what uh, uh, spaying and neutering, are you guys up and running with that? Uh, and how do people avail of it? No? Unfortunately, right now, no. Unfortunately, right now, it, 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 it's only through private clinics. Uh, we lost our, our, our full-time vet and the, our, our grant for that, but we are applying with the department, uh, with 
Department of Agriculture for a DOI grant to be able to re resume that in the future. So right now, our efforts are focused on education. We're trying to inform people that when you spay and neuter your pet, it reduces aggression. It reduces the likelihood of them uh, running away. It extends their life by reducing uh, the uh, prevalence of certain types of cancers. So it's a very it's a very reasonable thing to do in order to improve the life and quality of life of your animal. There you go. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you. Appreciate it. Be safe and keep us posted Thank on you. anything that uh, comes up. Okay. You got my number. Okay. Let's see you, Cyrus Lure, Guam Animals in Need. Uh, you guys ready? You got your passport? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna head down south. 